I've been wanting one of these Echo Fan Air Max fans for years, and I finally bought one of the Model 812, which is the biggest one that they make at this time. Um, it's made in Canada. It's assembled from international parts, so, you know, it's about as close as you can get to, uh, to being made in Canada, I guess. And I purchased this on Amazon, and they flew it from Oregon to my house overnight, pretty much. So, you know, here it is. This is how it's packed. Uh, it comes really well packaged, and I guess it has to be because you could damage a fan blade very easily. And basically, it's a um, it's just a fan blade on two two large heat sinks with a small motor on it. Um, it's, uh, you know, you can see there, everything was packaged good. It arrived in really great shape. And it does have a little warning label on there. Let me just yank this off. Now, there are a lot of, um, like, counterfeit models of this and stuff like that and uh, copies of it. But from what I understand, this is the best one. So I went with this, even though it does cost a little more. And it just says, do not drop in. 650 degrees is the highest temperature and my wood stove never goes over 500, so I'm not going to worry. And you can see the wood stove's burning. It's been burning for a couple of weeks now, so it's already hot, and I'm not going to get to see how long it takes to uh, heat up and start it. But um, they tell you to put it in the back corner of your stove, and I just so happen to have a problem where there's no flat spot back there to, to really sit it on and um, see how it, you know, how it exactly works. So I just set it back there in the corner you can see it's up on that raised lip around there and i was playing with it before i put it on there i spun it up and it seems to have created some electric or something or some heat in the module but you know there it is it's gonna stop now so i put it on there and i watched it for a little while and i i waited for about a minute and still nothing and you know i just sat there and then finally at about a little bit over two minutes um, and the stove's up around, it's around 260. That thermometer runs a little bit high. But um, after a little bit over two minutes, it started turning very slowly. You can see there, um, you know, just started picking up a little bit, little bit of speed. And the longer it, the longer it warmed up, the the faster it started running. And then finally, um, you know, it looked like. Uh, Probably it wasn't getting good contact with the stove there, the big gap in there. And so I moved that water pot over, the teapot, and you can see it's been sitting there for about 15 years. I'm going to have to sandblast that and paint it. But once I moved it over to the flat spot there and I turned it so it's not pulling heat from the stove pipe, uh, it really started to speed up a little bit there. And it's actually dead silent, uh, no noise whatsoever, and you really do not feel much air coming from it. It's pretty amazing. Uh, you know, back about five feet, you don't feel anything blowing, but you do feel air movement. You can feel the heat moving. So, you know, it's not it's not something that's going to blow you out of the way. And you can see I've been cutting up kindling wood in my shop. I cut up like a dozen buckets full of it just to clean up some. And, you know, there it is. It's uh, pretty much running. I've got it pointed towards the, the front windows there. Because, like they say, is don't have that heat sink uh, pointed towards the chimney pipe. Because that will make it run slower because uh, there will be less temperature differential. And I'll show you in a little while exactly how these thermoelectric modules work. You can see there's a thermoelectric module in there and then a little motor that it runs. Now, I originally thought that these uh, took a really hot stove to, to get them running, but um, you can see mine's about, it's about 260. Um, the little gauge is hard to see when I turn it away. It drops quick, but the um, top of the stove there is about 260, and uh, when I go up and I look at the heat sink on the thing there, you can see the di temperature differential. That's uh, down around 98. So that's what actually causes a module to create electric. And we had it running for a while in the house, and then I went over oh, about 20, 25 feet away from it now. And you can really feel the difference it makes. And there's my next project, a bunch of uh, walnut slabs stacked up there doing the final drying. So then I figured I'd go down in the shop, because I've got some of these modules laying around. I um, did work on some really high-tech applications for them years ago, and just figured I'd give you a really rough overview of how they work. 
They're just basically two ceramic faces, and they have some little materials in there called P and N, and I'm just going to call them heat pumps. And what they do is they transfer heat from one ceramic surface to the opposite surface. And they do it actually, um, they use electrons to transfer it. So, you know, basically, um, I'm just going to uh, take these three of them I've got wired together and hook them up to 12 volts. Now, these really do need heat sinks too, um, so you don't burn them up and stuff and you get them to, to work efficiently. But you can pretty much see that once I, once I plug them into 12 volts, they start generating uh, heat on one side and cool on the other side. And that whole temperature differential that you see is really fast reacting and... Um, it's just going to be a, a delta of really how big a heat sink and fans you have on them. But you can see um, without heat sinks, actually both sides will go up. But the one side really um, goes up a lot higher than the other. And all this doing is just transferring the heat, removing it from one side and exhausting it on the other. So that, you know, that just kind of shows you how they work that way. But there's really another neat feature to these modules, and that is when you apply heat to one side and cool to the other side, they actually become a little generator and they generate voltages. And that's how the, the fan actually works. They're applying, uh, they have the heat sink on the stove there, and then they have the other one in front of the blade there that cools the top of it. So the temperature differential actually turns it into a uh, little generator. I'm just going to hook this up to my meter here and show you. I've got that set up. Now I set them on a little piece of aluminum to keep them cool. And you can see they're about 9.7 millivolts just sitting there in the air differential. And then the minute I put my hand on them, you can see we're going up to like uh, 400 millivolts. And um, it'll just keep going, rising as they get warmer until they, you know, kind of equalize. But So there you can see, you know, that's just the basic of how they... Uh, they generate electricity. Now, I'm just going to take a torch and I'm just going to touch them so they don't destroy them. But you can see that it's up to 1.3 volts here. You know, just a second touching them with a torch. So they do react very fast. And they don't have proper heat sink compound or anything. So, And there you can see again, I'm going to, you know, get them up about 1.6 volts there. So, uh, you know, that's just basically how they work. And there's a lot of information online if you, um, you know, want to do any research on them. But, uh, you know, this is the, the feature of them that makes them turn their little motor on the fan. Now, I actually was uh, lucky to be on a team that uh, worked with these thermoelectric modules years ago to actually develop a cooler for the human body during heart surgery. And basically what it does, it uses these modules to precisely control a catheter that's placed in the patient. And after open heart surgery, when they start the blood flow up again, there's like a tremendous amount of oxygen in it that causes damage to the tissues. And, you know, basically these just slow down that damage by uh, having the body at the um, shivering point. And that actually worked out good. Somebody was willing to try it too. So I just thought I'd, you know, just do a quick overview of this fan. And uh, it looks like it's going to really work good for our room. We've got the big open room there. And it does not move a lot of air, but it does move just transfer the heat around and stuff which seems like you know something that you want and is dead silent so um i don't know how long it'll last or anything else but i'll keep you updated on it and i just thought i'd give you a very simple basic description of you know how how it actually works and what causes the um the voltage to be generated for the fan blade to turn there's plenty more information online if you want to research it thanks for watching please subscribe